Then we had the uh, return of Adam Cole. Tony Schiavone's in the ring, says, It gives me no pleasure in introducing this man. It's Adam Cole. Why would it give it? Oh, well, because of the Britt Baker, Baker of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I mean, but the thing is, is like he came out and and he was a super baby face, oh, which of man. course he was, which of course he was going to be. He's but, the biggest baby face, and he talks about all of his injuries and how, you know, I saw he, on social he, media he, that you know his story was was. I mean, I knew some of it, and you probably knew more than me. But I mean, I knew some of it, but and I I knew that there was a period where like he barely could leave the house. I mean, I did remember that, but I didn't know that like you know you get in a car and in fifteen minutes you start throwing up. That's that is scary, and um, he even mentioned to me you know how scary, you know it really was, and um, I'm really glad that he's back. Um, because I would hate for the thing, to, you know, I hate for it to be taken away from him. He's really good at what he does. And uh, the other thing, too, is, as he mentioned, that uh, his shoulder was a real, which has always been. He's had shoulder injury. He's had shoulder issues for, for years. But he said his shoulder was, was you know, what do you say, like hanging on or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So he mentioned that uh, he had these injuries, the head injury, the shoulder injury. He said the fans online had been so nice and he said, uh, you know, even the fans that didn't want him to come back still wanted to, him to be okay. And so. Well, it wasn't that they didn't want him to come back, but the ones who said, you know, you know, even if you can't come back yeah, type of the thing. Very, very thankful. And he said that uh, the bad news is not bad news for me. It's bad news for the rest of the locker room. I'm back. And so the place goes nuts. And I mean. I presume he's back full time as a babyface because he sure came off as a super babyface. Well, he has to be. A, he has to be babyface at first. I mean, he can always turn down the line. But the idea of him coming back and then trying to be a heel off of this, I mean, that's that's fighting the audience. You know, I mean, like it's the same thing with like Omega. I think that like when when you know, I think that Omega, um, you know, I mean, let's face it, the Young Bucks were heels before he, before he came back anyway. But I think that the idea with with Omega, you know, especially because he's got Don Callis. The natural thing is for him to be healed, but they know full well that he's going to have to be a baby face for a certain length of time because it, it's your then you then you get to the you know being stupid of like you know the people want to cheer him and now you're going to do like you know like what WCW would do and did do like with, when Buff Bag remember when Buff Bagwell came back and they did the turn like the first week he came back after he broke his neck and I just thought like this is the freaking stupidest organization I've ever seen. You know, because the guy just came back and, and he's going to be, you know, he's going to be over as a baby face. You want to turn him in a year or turn him when it's he's stale. But he came back to this giant reaction and then he turned week one. Right. And and that's stupidity. So, you know, you go with it. And, you know, if the people are super behind him for six months, you don't turn him. If they get stale, you know, you can turn them. And the same, the same Sounds story like the argument Kimberly. against turning MGF back heel again. Well, that's Came already back been... and everybody loved him. Yeah, they that's... went crazy for the guy. Yeah, well, that's a different story. You know, I mean, I think that, that that didn't help him either. But they're, well, I mean, ratings-wise, I can't say they're digging out of a hole because last week was the deepest hole they've been in. You know, um, hopefully the string of, uh, for their sake, hopefully the string of, I mean, it's it's been... Uh, what's it been like five straight weeks of great crowds and great shows? I mean, they're on a real this is one of the best runs. I think it's the best. Actually, I think for, for in-ring wrestling and hot crowds, I think this may be the best run they've had for Dynamite. Um, because, I mean, tonight's Dynamite probably for for depth of wrestling. I mean, it's got to be one of the best shows they've ever done. Maybe the best. Um, you know, it's, you know, in that ballpark. I mean, that that ladder match was Certainly among the greatest matches in the history of Dynamite. And uh, Danielson and, and Takeshita, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's like one of the greatest matches in the history of Dynamite, but it's a pretty freaking great match. And the Moxley match was a great match, too. The hey. WWE legendary hey, joke, joke book. book. Why do WWE superstars fingers hurt? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why Grin. were Gene Erkerlund's... Pants always so angry. Erkerland? <laughs> Where does Beth Phoenix shop online? Amazon? The Glamazon! Oh, yeah. Yep. No. No. I mean, no. <laughs> no, that is the answer. 
Glamazon. That's what I said. <laughs> what? You said Gramazon. No, I said Glamazon. <laughs> oh, there should be a Gramazon. <laughs> yeah, Gramazon, actually. You get, like, like, puppy you get it to you real slow. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.